Hello, grade twos. Unfortunately, today will be the last story that we will be reading together in our unit Westward expansion. So far, we've learned a lot of the inventions that were created during uh, the period of Westward expansion. And one of the inventions that we read about uh, was the Transcontinental Railroad. And although the Transcontinental Railroad was such a huge sensation for some people and it brought a lot of advantages, there were some of the advantages that um, the invention brought to certain population, such as the Native Americans. So today we'll be reading a story about the Native Americans, um, the specific tribe um, called the Lakota people, and how uh, westward expansion negatively affected them. Running Fox felt the tingle of butterflies in his stomach as he sat on his horse. It was his first time hunting for bison with his tribe, and he was excited and nervous. He hoped to be able to hunt well and make his tribe proud. He saw his brother, Black Eagle, smile and nod at him as if to say, you will be all right. Running Fox smiled a tight, nervous smile. The butterflies in his stomach felt like they were multiplying, and he could feel his heart pounding. Running Fox knew how important the bison were to his people, the Lakota people. The bison were their source of life. The Lakota depended on bison meat for food and bison skins for leather and clothing. They even used the bones of the bison to make tools. Running Fox remembered his father teaching him about the bison. The bison are sacred to our people, my son, he said. This is why we honor their spirit and thank them for giving us their lives to help our people survive. We have always followed the great bison herds. Before we had horses, we follow the herds on foot. But now, Running Fox thought proudly, we are great horsemen who can keep up with the bison when they try to escape. We kill only as many as we need to live. We never kill so many that the herds disappear. If the bison disappear, so will the Lakota people. Just then, Chief Red Cloud, the Lakota leader, gave the first signal. Running Fox knew exactly what to do. He and half of the hunters rode down to the bottom of the hill behind the herd so the bison would not see them. They positioned themselves directly in the path the bison would need to take to escape when Chief Red Cloud's group charged down the hill. After giving Running Fox's group time to get into position, Chief Red Cloud, still atop the hill, whistled sharply. At once, his hunters kicked their heels against their horses, side and charge down the hill toward the bison. Most of the herd did not even notice the horsemen coming, but a few bulls, the huge shaggy male bison at the edges of the herd, were on guard. They saw the riders and lifted their great horn heads, snorting loudly. Then they turned and galloped away from the approaching hunters. In a matter of moments, the entire herd was moving, picking up speed as a bull sensed danger. The skilled horsemen kept their balance and directed their horses by using pressure from their knees and feet, leaving their hands free for bows and arrows. Aye, aye, the Lakota shouted, and the frightened bison ran away from the hunters even faster, right along the pathway the hunters had predicted. That was when Running Fox and the other hunters came riding out from behind the hill. Seeing them, the bison did not know where to go. By this time, the hunters were riding along the edges of the herd, shooting arrows. Running Fox was so secure on his horse that he felt like his horse was a part of him. That the horse's legs were his legs, nervousness forgotten. Running Fox fired one arrow and then another. A big bull bison fell to the ground. Let's pause and think. 
How do you think Running Fox felt to get a bison on his first hunting trip? After a few more bison had fallen, Chief Red Cloud shouted, We have enough! He signaled to the hunters to stop. Running Fox and the other hunters turned back, allowing the remainder of the bison to thunder off. Chief Red Cloud rode over to Running Fox, put his hand on the young man's shoulder, and said, Let us pause and thank these bison for giving themselves so that we might live. After a few minutes, Chief Red Cloud said, Now, you are truly a Lakota. Running Fox grinned for just a moment. Then he remembered to look serious and grown up. Changing his expression, he nodded seriously to the chief and thought, Chief Red Cloud has honored me by noticing what I did today. Meanwhile, the bison moved on, slowing down as the immediate danger disappeared. Leaving some of the men to prepare the fallen bison, Chief Red Cloud signaled Running Fox to join the group of hunters who were following the bison to see where the herd was headed. Running Fox was honored to be asked to track the herd. He rode proudly behind the herd with the other more experienced hunters. As they continued on, Running Fox suddenly realized, the herd is heading straight toward the iron horse. Train tracks had been built right through the middle of the Lakota hunting grounds, and recently, locomotives had started charging through on them, hissing steam and carrying train cars with passengers. Let's pause and think. Do you think locomotive trains could be dangerous to the bison and to the Lakota people? Why or why not? Later, just as the train tracks came into view, the riders came to a sight so shocking that they all stopped riding and stared. On the ground before them lay dozens of bison. Someone had killed them and taken only the best parts of the meat, leaving behind the rest of the bison. Running Fox asked the hunter next to him, Why would someone kill in this way? Don't they know that wasting a bison is wrong? The hunter did not answer. Running Fox turned to his chief. Chief Red Cloud's face looked so angry and stormy as his name implied. The men who made the iron horse did this, he said. It is not enough that they have to come into our country, made our hunting grounds smaller, and forced us into different lands. Now they hunt the bison for sport, for fun, only taking certain parts of the bison and leaving the rest to rot. They threaten our people's lives by killing so many bison. If all of the bison die, so will our people. We cannot survive without the bison. Let's pause and think. Is this the way Running Fox and his people treat the bison? How do you think the Lakota felt to see this sight? Another question is, who do you think was responsible for wasting the bison? Running Fox could see Chief Red Cloud's eyes blazing with anger as he spoke. I have tried to tell them, the chief continued solemnly, but they refused to listen. He turned, looked right at Running Fox and said, We have spoken peacefully with them and we will do so again. I hope that this time they will listen. Otherwise, we may have further conflict with them. Chief Red Cloud turned and led his men back the way they had come.